I'm Sarah. I'm currently um, an inclusion team member working with children with learning difficulties in a primary school setting. And how did you get into your current position? I was volunteering at one of the local schools and I realized that there was a big need in Mauritius for learning support and I didn't have the qualifications to do it as a career. So I decided that because I was a stay-at-home mom at the time and I had a bit of time that I would follow my master's and do a master's in special and additional learning needs. But as part of the course, I needed to have work experience. So I went to my local school where the girls were then working, I mean, at school. And I said, this is what I'm doing and would I be able to come and do some work there? And that was literally how I ended up working in the inclusion team. and. Is something that I'm very passionate about because I have my own learning difficulties. Um, so I'm dyslexic. I was much older when they diagnosed it. And I was told that I was stupid going through school my whole life. And if I can go in and support these kids and even make them believe in themselves, then I'm doing the right thing. Can you talk a little about what your day-to-day -day work is like and some specific ways that you might practice inclusion support? So at the moment, obviously, with confinement, things are slightly different. So it's, it's uh, we have to adapt. With being inclusion, we have to be very, very flexible anyway. So at the moment, I work with the year threes, which are eight-year-olds, and the year sixes, which are your 10 turning 11-year-olds. Um, so if I look at my year threes, I have two children who are on the spectrum. So with the kind of support I work with them is very tailored to their weaknesses. So I can be learning or uh, teaching them about learning inferred meaning because they're so literal with what they do. I will sit with them and I will teach them how to look at a picture and infer from that that it's raining or it's snowing. Um, so there's where there's no explicit content. But with my year sixes where I've got more dyslexic students, I'll be teaching them how to spell um, and break things down phonetically. So I'm teaching them the phonics and the letter sounds and the blends and the graphemes um, and how to read a text and understand um, what it really means. So it's not just the words on the paper, but there's a bigger picture and making the synthesizing and connecting to the global topics as well. Um, so I, I work a lot with specific targets for these children that we discuss with the class teachers um, and we just develop each child's learning uh, inclusion plan um, we develop specifically for that child so every child is very very different with what we do so it can be quite interesting jumping between the year groups so going off of that um, what do you find what would you say you find most rewarding about your job the small wins. As homeroom teachers, they have to look at making uh, or reaching the expectations for the year group. For me, if I've got a child that can't remember how to use a long E sound um, or like with the magic E at the end of a word, and all of a sudden I've been working on it for six months and they grasp it, and it's that win. And the accomplishment and the look on these kids' faces when they've had these small wins um, is just so rewarding. And it helps build them up and seeing them think and believe in themselves is just the best feeling and the best thing I could ever want to do. And do you, do you have some, some things that you find that might be harder in your job? It's hard because sometimes we get a bit too attached to the kids um, because we care so much about them. Um, it's hard to, if they're struggling, you struggle with them. And if they're having a bad day and you can't, uh, you can't reach them, you can't teach them, they're blocked off because there's, a, there's something else that's happening. It's one of the hardest things to cope with because you can see that this child has just got this block that isn't, it's not their fault. There's an external uh, reason that they're struggling and not being able to unpack it and not give them, the, they don't have the skills 
to um, progress further. And it's really hard because you can see that these kids want to do something, but there's a bigger issue. Um, and it's, it's not demoralizing, but it's heartbreaking when you, can, you can't identify exactly what, what it is that's causing the delays with them. And what inspired you to get into inclusion support? Was there something else that you were doing before this? I always wanted to be a teacher of some sort. So from when I was at school, I'd always be helping and tutoring and supporting the kids that were just lower than me. And like I said, because I'm dyslexic, nobody believed in me. Even when I did my A-levels, my teachers were still telling me I was stupid and not to apply to a decent university and that I was broken. And it's taken me many, many years to find the courses that I wanted to study and have the confidence and courage to study it. So if I can reach a child at primary school and they can have somebody who they know believes in them from a young age, then I've done my job because I know that I've given them that foundation skill to have like it's water for ducks back if somebody tries to put them down they're like no I can do this I am better and they've got that one person who believes in them and I never had that one person and if I can be that person for just one or two children then I've succeeded and this is what drives me and inspires me to do what I do and to stay with it because it isn't easy to do to, to work with these children that learn so differently um, because they're, they're very complex children, but they're remarkable and they deserve every opportunity. And it's not fair that because they learn differently, they get pushed by the wayside. They need to learn to love themselves. They need to believe in themselves. They need to realize that, yeah, life's going to be hard, but it's not their is not internal to them. Other people's judgments are other people's judgments that they must believe in themselves and they can accomplish whatever they want as long as they can hold on to those self-beliefs and have a high self-esteem. Do you have any long-term goals with your job? Yes, but it's, it's a very bizarre long-term goal. And as much as I'm a diver as well, I'm very passionate about diving. And I can believe that there's a very strong overlap between my day job and my passion for diving. Because when you dive, you have a sensory break. Your sound, the way you hear things, the way you see things, the way you feel things, you don't taste, you don't smell. So you get the sensory break. And so a lot of the extreme kids that I work with have got an overload. And they can't process the academics because their bodies are just so busy processing all of their senses. So if I can get bring the two together and I can give them that sensory break by being in the water, by experiencing this deep sense of meditation, then their ability to learn will improve naturally because they, they've had this break. They've freed up the space in their brains and their bodies in order to have the energy and the mental capacity to learn the academics which sadly in the world we live in they have to pass academics to succeed um, so if I can try and bring this together um, and just make them do a little bit better and know that there are options of ways to relax themselves and explore healthy options and not find when they hit high school that you know alcohol is a good way to relax because of the long the long-term implications of drinking to relax obviously aren't always good but if you've got a healthy option and you can go diving and you can then do that and then study um it's, it's i think that there's a it's a much healthier way to do it because you're then looking after your body and your mind um, and it's just a more holistic approach to academics and overall well-being. And I think people miss that link between the well-being and the academics. 
So you, you do you currently teach diving to your children then, or is this just a goal? That's my goal. I That's teach, a goal. Okay. I, it's my goal. Um, I do teach um, some people to dive, and I like working and diving with those that have anxiety issues, even as adults. If people panic or are really worried about it or have huge fears, I always say, let me take them. Let me take them and ex expose them to the experience because I've got the time and the patience to do it. And yes, obviously my primary focus is the children um, for long-term, but to see these people that are struggling and scared of water and we succeed and we go down and they're like, wow. And you can just see their whole body language changes. And so if there's, there is a connection between these two areas and I just have to one day get there and make it happen. Do you have any advice for people that are looking to take their career in sort of a similar direction as yours? I mean, if people are interested in inclusion and learning support, it's not an easy job. It is a very, very rewarding job and I would recommend it to anybody who has a compassionate side. If you don't, if you're not compassionate or empathetic, which isn't a bad thing, but if you don't have that strong drive in those areas, then it's not the kind of job that you would enjoy because you are looking, like I said, at the small wins. You have to connect with the children you're working with and you have to be able to say, okay, I've planned, I've spent two hours planning this week's work and I can't do it because I've got a blockage. So you've got to be flexible and you've got to be able to read your children. But it is the most rewarding job I could ever want to do because you see these kids when they can succeed in something that they've been struggling and the light bulb goes on and their faces light up. It's better than any paycheck at the end of the month, you know, because it fulfills your soul in a different way. Wow. Well, thank you so much for your time. My absolute pleasure. Thank you so much.